All right. So in this uh, concept building, you're uh, looking at two objects falling, uh, whether or being caught, jumping. All these require an impulse to either start something or to stop something. So the water balloons here, they, they compare this way. The uh, which variable is different? Well, I think you can see by the size that one has a much larger mass than the other. Now, the one thing you need to to read uh, carefully is the instructions up here. So it gives you the masses, so at least you know right away that um, they're different sizes, but also the fact that they are moving at the same speed when they are being caught. So uh, the other thing is the collision time is the same. So just read those carefully so you can compare them properly. So if we have a uh, small water balloon being caught and then the larger water balloon and we know the mass is larger for the big guy which case involves the greatest change in momentum so if we if they are both have the same change in velocity right they both were hit hitting the hands at eight meters per second and then come to rest the difference is the mass. So you can see right there that B, the balloon B, has a mar larger change in momentum. If B has the larger change in momentum, then we'll also have a larger impulse. And in fact, in order to have a larger impulse, if the impact time is the same for both, then B has the larger impact force because it has the larger overall impulse and the larger change in momentum. When it comes to catching a baseball, again, you got to read the details. Uh, they're both hitting the glove at 40 meters per second, about 90 miles an hour, a little less. And for situation A, you can see that he moves the glove backwards a little bit, kind of like absorbing the uh, the catch more so than in in part b so think of it they say, you know it says moves back 30 centimeters but think of it as an increased time to catch the ball all right in that increased time you're going to move back uh, a little further so which variable is different so the time is different because he allows the the ball to come to rest over a, lar a larger distance which case involves the greater change of momentum? Well, if both are baseballs and both are hitting the glove at the same speed, then so case A is larger impact time, smaller impact time. Um, now both have the same mass and both have the same change of velocity. Well, if they both have the same change in momentum, then they both must have the same impulse. But here's the difference. You can apply a smaller force over the larger time in case A. In case B, you have to supply a bigger force over a smaller time. But the combination of the force and time is the same for both A and B, because you're stopping the baseball regardless. Jumping off the ground. So in both of these cases, you leave the ground at the same speed. And that is 12 meters per second. So it takes an impulse to do that, right? You have to push off the ground. Now, with your knees bent versus straight, no, oh, strikes the force, excuse me. I misheard that. So he's coming down with the same speed in both cases. But absorbing your, uh, your landing by bending your knees is gonna be a much better move uh, than just keeping your knees straight. So which variable is different? In this case, uh, time. Because you take a longer time in case A than you would do in case B to come to rest. So larger time, smaller time. Which case involves the greatest change in momentum? 
Well, they're both the same. It's the same person, m, and the same change in velocity. All right? They're landing at 12 meters per second, and they're coming to rest. So the same change in speed. Now, impulse is the same also, but when it comes to case A, you're slowing yourself down with a longer impact time so you can supply less force to do that. So it's easier on your, on your body, on your knees. Whereas if you just land with a locked knee, it's a lot of force over a smaller period of time.